know what that is. I wish you did. And if you know what that is, I love you so much. And welcome back to my channel, beautiful. How are you doing today? So I'm here and I'm ready in my 18th century uniform. I'm ready to do, oh, sorry. Ready to follow an 18th century hair tutorial. And I really dressed the part today. I felt very 18th century in this. I might have my centuries mixed up, but um, I, I'm out of breath. I danced for five seconds and I can't breathe. So that's good. All that working out really pays off, I guess. I came across this video that went viral, I don't know, a few weeks ago, whatever it was. And this girl named Lopsy, Lopsy, Leopsy, Lopsy, I feel like Lopsy sounds better. It doesn't really all, I mean, it sounds right. But I found this girl who made a video called I followed an 18th century hair tutorial. Don't try this at home, which I'm not gonna listen to the last part, but I watched a little bit of it. And I was like, before I watch this entire thing, I need to try it myself. This needs to happen. I need to do this, I need to do it. I have been wanting to follow a really old hair tutorial, but I didn't even know like how to even find that. I didn't know if there was any. I had a really hard time finding books. I don't know, I was a mess. I'm not an 18th century expert and I don't know anything about that century. Uh, so this should be good. So basically I'm gonna follow that same 18th century tutorial that Lopsy did on her channel. So thank you girl for doing this. And I am gonna completely copy you and do the same exact thing. The video she did following 18th century hair tutorial was really amazing and it's very fun to watch. On her channel, she does a lot of following these older hair tutorials. So check it out, she's awesome. I've seen her videos a lot before. It'll be linked below, her channel. Dope. This is gonna be like perfect for me because I hate reading, I have no patience, and I have no knowledge of the 18th century or what the hair looks like. <laughs> this is gonna be so good. And in her video, she also mentions that she's used to following visual tutorials and not written tutorials about hair styling. And same with me, girl. I can't imagine how hard this is gonna be for me because I'm such a visual learner. And again, I hate to read and I tend to skip over words as I read and tend to not pay attention and tend to lose focus very fast. So this should be very interesting for me because I'm not gonna have many idea what's going on, I'm sure. Um, but I'm gonna really try my best. I'm gonna read very slowly and read and reread and reread again. And so hopefully this works out for me. Let me build my patience up and let's get started. So I did a little bit of research before this on 18th century hair, just to get a little bit of a visual of what the hell I'm supposed to do here because I don't know anything about that time, really. I mean, I, I've seen pictures, yeah, but like I've never really analyzed the hair a ton. And to me, I saw a lot of these kinds of pictures and you see kind of a consistency between all the hairstyles. They're all a lot of volume, there's curls, there's a lot of pinning, there's a lot of pin curls. There's just a lot of stuff going on. It's quite camp, if I do say so myself. There's no sort of consistency of what's going on. Everything kind of has the same idea, but it's done very differently on every different person's head. And now I guess I'm just gonna jump into doing the tutorial. That Lopsy, Lopsy, God damn it! I wish I knew her name. Let me just have her explain to you a little bit about what this book is about, who the hairstylist is that wrote this book, and all that good stuff. There is this book by James Stewart, who was a master hairdresser in London. It was published in 1782, and it is called Ploca Cosmos, or The Whole Art of Hairdressing, wherein is contained ample rules for the young artisan, as well as directions for persons to dress their own hair, a written hair tutorial. It's probably gonna suck. <laughs> So that's what the book is about and that is what's going on. Sounds very interesting. I couldn't imagine being an 18th century woman and trying to follow this. I'm sure it was very difficult. Like she said, I don't think that they really did their hair themselves. You always hired somebody to wash and cut and style your hair and you wore that hairstyle for weeks or even a month. I don't know really how long. Then she continues to say in this book, he then cuts their hair into a sort of mullet, I guess, which I'm not gonna do today because I just don't wanna ruin my lovely model over here's hair, even though she might not be real. <laughs> we don't have to talk about it. Shh, shh, oh, that's her secret. Come on, come on, girl. Let's go. 
Come on. Surprise, it's another mannequin. <laughs> she looks kind of real, ew. You're a real girl. So basically what's gonna be going on here is I took screenshots of this girl's video of the text from the book that she's reading from in order to follow this hair tutorial. I am gonna also read those myself and follow it myself without looking at how Lil C did her own hair because I just don't want to be influenced by anybody on this look and I want to create my own thing just by reading these words. So she also explains that first, basically there's a long excerpt about cutting and adding pomade to the entire head and then they add powder on top of all of that to then suck all of that grease back in. Okay, so we're just gonna do this step first and then I'll start reading the pages from the book. A lot of people think dry shampoo is like a recent thing, like no girl. They were using powder to suck in oils for so long. I'm gonna add some pomade here. This is just some J. Crew pomade. It's pretty simple. And I'm gonna add literally so much so that it is so gross. You can see it's already getting like very greasy. You're supposed to use flour as the dry shampoo here. Uh, that's what they did in the 18th century. But um, I know this is crazy, but I don't have flour in my house. And I'm really too lazy to go get some. <laughs> So I'm gonna be using dry shampoo, but honestly, it's nearly the same thing. Okay, so her hair literally looks wet. Ew, this is so gross. Guys, usually when you're styling hair, the base is the most important. So this is our base today. This is what we're working with. This is how you get that 18th century look, honey, that we're all trying to achieve. Uh, am I right? And honestly, I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of glitterati because I need that all. She is lacking a lot of shine. I know they didn't have glitterati in the 18th century, but like, I just can't live without my own product. So, it's gonna go there. Shh, it's fine, it's fine. I'm cheating, okay? Yeah, I cheated in school too, so it's fine. Don't cheat, kids. Or do, I don't know. I'm now gonna work through with this powder. You can buy dry shampoo either in an aerosol or you can buy it in a uh, powder form. So, this is pretty much, look at it. This is very similar to using flour. It's gonna give you that nice white cast that all the people in the 18th century had in their hair. It's gonna be awesome. And this pomade underneath is, is also adding a lot of stickiness. So that way the powder is gonna stay in the hair. I'm being very heavy handed here. <laughs> <laughs> look at the mess I'm making. So this is the side that's powdered, clearly. But look at how much of a difference dry shampoo makes. Isn't that crazy? Like, this is gross. This is like kind of soft. And yeah, we're just gonna keep working it in until it's all done. It's all gone, all this grossness. It might take a while. This is so fascinating to me. The fact that I could just transform this into this with dry shampoo is dope. Ew, look at the brush. Ew. On to the other side. So we're now 30 minutes into this video today and all I've done was grease her hair up and then take the grease out. So does it make sense to you? Look at me when I talk to you. Does that make sense? Great, same. Makes a lot of sense to me too. So let's move on. This should be very entertaining for both me and you and maybe less me because I'll just be frustrated the whole time. But let's start reading the first excerpt from the book. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, it says, I will flirf we're already starting off weird, okay. Therefore, recommend putting in papers. Okay. You are therefore, it is to be fuff puffed. <laughs> what did you just say? So it's almost like the words are spelt wrong, or you can still kind of read the word in today's English writing, but it also isn't in today's English. Very interesting. Okay, so femifish, well, proper quantity. How do you even say these words? Of French curling papers, okay. Which is certainly much the best, <laughs> I think you meant best, being tougher at the same, fame, at the fame time, thinner, sooner, <laughs> is this, am I being punk? Is this really how they wrote things or is this like me having a seizure right now and trying to read it? Can't even talk now, who am I? <sighs> Cut in two pieces, four inches square. Cut the them franks fur like a half handkerchief. 
Make, it makes sense to me. I don't know if you guys like what. So, okay. Basically, he's just saying use paper to do these curls. And I saw in the other girl's video that she recommended using tissue paper. And that was most similar to what they used in the 18th century. So that's what we're going to use today. I got this. So I have my paper here. We're going to cut a square four by four inches. So that's pretty simple. They could have just said that in the beginning. I mean, so we have our square. Now we're going to cut it down the center to make them into half handkerchiefs. Great. So that is step one complete. Complete. This is where it gets kind of interesting because in the book it says to do a center parting, basically like a mohawk section, down the middle about three quarters of an inch wide, which three quarters of an inch is very small. And I think that their heads were a lot smaller back then. So that might totally be false. I don't know. So we're gonna actually do like double that because I don't think that's what they want me to do. Let's do an inch and a half maybe thick. They say to start uh, in the front. So we're gonna like just take the rest of this back. I don't know if they had clips back then, but you know what? I do, so screw them. Step two, the back one, which is the fleur farthest from, whoa, fleur you do. Muff be curled as I mean from the end of the tail comb, from the end of, you can't, can't fully care foe as not to tie, tease a uh, finger and then thumb. <laughs> you must draw the nine teeth of your comb through it. Okay, just comb out the hair. Okay, you could have just said that. And draw it tight from the head like a piece of silk ribbon. They're just doing pink curls. Okay, this isn't that hard. So this second step says to, I think they said start in the front, right? We're just gonna go and comb it out because I think that's what they said. I think they said to start the ends and work your way up, which makes sense because it's very hard to detangle this hair because it has all this product in it. Can't even see the ends of her hair, but I'm up here, you guys, okay? I'm just gonna fold this over like that and put it at the ends. We're just doing a pin curl set with a piece of paper because that is how they did things. And this is a lot of hair for this little tiny piece of paper. Okay, so now it says to take the ends of the paper and twist them. Oh no. Oh my God, that's actually kind of fun. Okay, so that is a curl. The next curl, should I read it in like a like 18th century voice? The next curl will, is to be twisted or crepe. You have now fabricated it. Fabrita. <laughs> As before, direction are to be spun fingers and thumb each hand in. I must sound so crazy right now. If pipe ashes or anything grifty, then you must roll. Did people really talk like this? Blah, 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 and small combat. So it just says to do, I think we're doing a few more over in the back. I hope they had like some musicians playing for them as they did this hair because this is ridiculous, girl. This is a lot of freaking work. Boom. Okay, I get the idea here. This is basically just putting in rollers in the top. Um, that way she gets this volume up here. And then we're gonna see what we do with the side. So we're just gonna do like three sections up here. I couldn't imagine if I had no knowledge of hair and never had seen somebody do hair before and you're trying to read this in the 18th century, girl, that would be not easy at all. That is for sure. Bam! Okay, so that is my three sections. Moving on. Let's finish setting the rest of the hair and pin curls. I'm just gonna do like two rows over here and two rows in the back and two rows, two rows on the other side. And we're gonna finish this real quick. I'm learning something right now that tissue paper is so dope for doing pin curls. Where was I when this was a thing? Because this is so easy and I really like doing this. Should I, was I alive in the 18th century? Was that like my past life? Um, don't really believe in that, but like maybe now I do. This is so fun to try this at home, you guys. Okay, I'm like very satisfied with my work right now. <laughs> Half the head complete. And as you can see, I just did that same exact thing. These pin curls with tissue paper over the entire head. And I'm gonna finish this side. Let's do it. I should have told you guys in the beginning of this video, this is totally my original idea. Just to see how many people I would trigger. <laughs> Damn it. Such a missed opportunity. <laughs> like I haven't seen anybody else do this yet on YouTube. And like, 
Um, this is my idea. Yo, people get so worked up about people copying other people on YouTube when really nobody has an original idea at this point, you guys. Everybody's done everything. And even if you have an original idea, sort of, you're always kind of copying somebody else. So just chill, okay? Tell them you didn't properly source your idea and where it came from. And this is the person that started it. All right, you guys, let's let's start changing the internet to be a little bit more positive and a little more forgiving because it is just such a gross place right now. And that's my speech for today. You know, for a second, I was wondering why they were cut into triangles, this piece, these pieces of paper, why we did that. But now it all makes sense because when you have a triangle, the longer of the two sides, you have a length over here, but then you have the thickness in the middle when you roll it up. That way you have plenty to wrap around in the middle. That doesn't make sense. Then I don't know how else to explain it. Almost done. Okay, so the next step says, we left the front curled in papers and by two, and by the toupee iron, which I think means a flat iron, looks upon laughed operation as of the laugh combo. <laughs> we will go on with the, them first. <laughs> we will go with the iron and give them a flirt. Flirt, a furf. Which I think means just like a quick little like doop doop. Basically, we're just trying to set these into the hair with the with the iron, which I have never tried this before, and I don't have a lot of hope for it. So why don't we just try one in the front? We he did say to start in the front, and the ones we first put in. Ow, it's really hot. Mm, I feel like this is not gonna work, but we're gonna give it a shot. You know, maybe because there's so much pomade and stuff in there, it'll be um, curly anyways. Okay, so yeah, we have to go and do this to the entire head, one by one. This will take a while, all right? So why don't we just do a little fast forward, shall we? All right, perfect. I wish we could do that in real life, but we can't, so. <laughs> Love you. Before I waste my time doing this entire head like this, I just wanna see if this front one is set at all. Oh my God, it did. It worked, it worked, it worked, it worked, it worked. We have a little ugly curl, how cute. <laughs> okay, so that worked, fortunately. Wow, I'm such an 18th century hairdresser. Ah, come at me. <laughs> Don't get too excited yet. All right, I have the whole head ironed and it's cooled off from the top. So I'm gonna start taking them out one by one and also letting it cool down. Let's do this, all right? And then we'll get to the next step, which is step six. Great. So while this is cooling down on the rest of the hair, um, we have these cute little curls going on. Look at this. I'm gonna read the next step. So, it says, hair is now held in the left hand. Grab the hand dwelling comb in the right. Okay, they're back combing. What well, the end of their hair uh, in the four fingers and the whatever, and comb back. Great, we're back combing again. Hold about five inches of the hair. Put the comb into the hair cloth to your left hand. Tan okay, blah, 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 this is the hair. The comb, whatever, whatever. The more power you put into the co back combing, the more you must pull on the hair. Easy enough. We're back combing. Doesn't say really how or why or whatever, but we're gonna back comb. He also says to keep putting more dry shampoo in, but honey, my girl over here ain't trying to wear this for three weeks straight, so we good, all right? spent an entire day styling these women's hairs. Like, yo, imagine having to also cut it and I don't know, color it and do whatever the hell else they do all in one day. And then, oh, having to get all this teasing out from the last time you did their hair. Imagine how mad it'd be the next time you touch it. Oh, oh thank you. All right, step seven says, but great pains must be taken. This is not reducing the length, but appear as long as it really is. There is double reason for this firmness to hold and keep together. If it is well done, it appears like a fripe of the hair cloth was wove, was woven. <laughs> as high as the length of the hair, finish and take out. Great! <laughs> so we're gonna continue to take 
all this out and tease the rest of it. <laughs> Guys, I'm so surprised at how much this curled. I really didn't think this was gonna work. I don't know how it worked. Ah! Just worked her hair out. Okay, that one was a fail. Same. She is fluffed and stuffed. And she's looking very 80s right now. <laughs> Not for long. We're gonna read the next step and let's proceed. <laughs> Before we proceed further, oh, sorry. It may need a, f oh, okay. We will part them as such. With the wide end of the comb, draw a line three inches back, flaunting from the crown of the head, inclining to the top of the ear. The line should enhance from the ear near four inches, whole of left from the center of the forehead. One more time, all right? On my, uh, okay. So they're saying at the ear, crown of the head is the division is about six inches. Why does this guy make everything so complicated? I'm pretty sure he's just saying to go from the back of the ear up and part all this stuff out. That way you have the six inches of the perimeter of the head all out in the front. And that's gonna be your first section. Okay. Hear that snapping of hair? Okay, that's out there. All right, so we have that. That is our section. We're just gonna, Section that off, just like that. All right, great. Next. The curl of each side being thus far done, front is to be finished. Frizzing in every root as before direction. Doing it in the same direction as the other the sides. I think it says to do the sides already. When this is frizz, is clearly and well done. It looks like a quick fat hedge in June. Okay, so it looks like, you're trying to make it look like a bush. But instead of growing perpendicularly, flaunting regularly from the face. Wanting regularly from the face. Okay, so, so going back, but like a nice hedge. I'm unsure to, as if they had bobby pins back then, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna f***ing use them anyways. Great. And it says to put the sides or the top something in the same direction as the other side of the whatever. <laughs> so we're gonna do like a chignon sort of moan. Ew. Get out. Hey, look at that, it's fun. So then this is gonna go back and we're gonna create this sort of like thing. Ah! Why is this so much fun? Yo, get at me. We're continuing to make our hedge here and I'm going to try and make it a little bit bigger on the top here. We're really going for height, all right? If we're gonna do this, we might as well do it right. Cool. I swear I have never done anything like this before. I don't even know where I, look how much hair is coming out also, it's disgusting. And I'm so shook that this is actually working and this looks 18th century to me, even though I have no idea what 18th century really is. Okay, the next direction says, I don't know what this says. Okay, make it neat. You now proceed to do your hair up and behind in which there is many ways as the hair is now held and fudge pains taken with it. Do it in multiple sections in three even sections. Okay. And each div division pretty well smooth and combed then with a little faft pomptum on the hand. Oh, okay, a little bit of pomade on the hand. Straggling ha straggly hairs. Never should above three or four quaffs. When done, croffings. All I wanna do is read English. I have a headache from reading this I'm done with this. This is the last step. I think I can do it. What I believe he's saying is to separate this into four sections. Okay, so we're kind of already separated into four sections. So that's easy. And I am gonna guess that we're doing like chignons. Like that's what I kind of got from that. I don't know how, but like that is what I got. Dude, imagine if this guy that wrote this book knew that a YouTuber would be following this tutorial. He would have never known that he'd be part of a YouTube trend. <laughs> Life is weird. <laughs> because I have that like really good base in there to work with, it's not like extremely difficult to style because you already have so much teasing in there. You can really just like move it, put one pin in it and just like move it to where you want it after. It's pretty fun. All right, so that is that side done. Now I have to replicate this on the other side. 
and I'm still not sure if this is 18th century sort of look, but I think it is. Don't come for me, thanks, bye. I'm gonna do this real quick off camera. I have finished three and a half hours of styling later. We are done. And I'm, I think, very proud of what I accomplished for having literally no idea what I was doing, had never even really seen 18th century hair, I literally looked it up for two seconds before I started this video. Never done any of this. Let me show you what it turned out like. Um, don't come for me. It's like kind of cute. <gasps> Yo, what? I mean, for not using any, just don't mind that bald spot. I don't know if this is 18th century to be honest with you, but that's what I got out of what I read. He said four sections and make chignons out of it. So I did just that, okay? For not using any products. Except for dry shampoo. But that doesn't count, which is very similar to flour that they used back then. I mean, I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> I think this looks 18th century to me. I don't know, you guys be the judge of it. Maybe I'm totally wrong, but I'm living and I'm happy that one of these I tried videos of mine came out good. So that is my look. You guys, honestly, if you're a hairdresser out there, you should try and do this. This taught me so much about how to style. I don't know, it was just very interesting to follow somebody who was probably an amazing hairdresser of that time. Um, just to see how they work and see how they describe how to do hair. It's super eye-opening and interesting and I had so much fun doing this. This is probably the most fun I've had doing a video in a long time. Like I just really enjoyed this for some odd reason. I thought I was gonna really hate it, but at the same time like it, but I just really loved it. And it was totally worth the three and a half hours of styling. Anyways, if you guys would like to uh, purchase Glitterati, it'll be linked below. If you guys would like to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, listen, you should, because it's fun. And I love talking to you guys on those platforms. And that is all. Thank you so much for watching today. Don't forget, to live your extra life, and I will see you uh, next time. Peace!